Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to talk to y'all about one of my favorite plants and that is mint. Um, if there were one plant that I could have recommended to myself right from the beginning whenever I was getting into gardening that can live through just about anything that I throw at it, it would be mint. There are so many different varieties. Here on this side of the bed, and you can see this area gets afternoon shade. Mint will tolerate uh, not quite full shade. Some varieties will, like the lemon balm, Melissa, Aficiona Melissa officinalis. I'm not good at speaking Latin. Um, it does pretty well in a full shade environment, like maybe two hours of sunlight will do it pretty good. So not a deep shade, but anyways. It does really well in full sun as well as partial shade. It does well in both wet and dry conditions, which is fantastic. Um, this stuff here, this part of the yard, is not even irrigated. Please pardon traffic noises. <sighs> Yay for having an urban farm. Um, <laughs> this is spearmint that's growing all through here. And you can kind of see I actually have this planted as an underplanting for around our roses. And I have um, some peppermint up in the front. Actually, it's sweet mint up in the front. I don't know, I got like a cutting of it from like Lowe's or something. Lowe's or Home Depot, it's one of the Bonnie plants that they had, you know, like on clearance because it didn't get watered and it was like all wilted and stuff. What's really great about mint is most varieties are perennial. So they'll come back year after year. So even if the greenery dies back or you mow over it or, sorry hummingbirds, um, <laughs> you mow over it, the chickens get it, I see you chicken bird, it'll grow back as long as those roots stay intact. A lot of people will say not to plant mint unless you're planting it like in planters or pots or like um, a parishioned off section like this like you can see it's got like you know concrete and stuff like it's sectioned off because you can see I planted one plant, one little like single stem seedling two years ago and it took over this entire area. But you can see it's competing directly with some, you know, there's some different weeds growing in here. There's Virginia creeper growing throughout. So it will compete with some of these more kind of hardcore um, weeds and things that are actually pretty hard to pull out of the ground. Um, so I, yeah, I use it as a ground cover. I like it. I like drying it and using it in both incenses as well as teas and like baths, like, you know, bath teas and stuff. Um, also the rabbits love it. They love it, especially like I'll pick some and I'll keep it in the fridge for them and then give it to them as a nice afternoon treat. To propagate, which is like make more of your mint, I've had a really hard time getting it to grow from seed, but the best techniques I've been able to use are actually through root division, which would be just pulling up a section. You can see I just uprooted this. I would take it. You can see it's got some white clover growing in with it. Um, I would take this and I would repot it and keep it inside in a really sunny spot for about a week just to let it start, week or two actually, just to let its roots get over that trauma of just getting ripped out of the ground. You could if you wanted use like a hand trowel and dig up a section, but I would just take this and go and replant it somewhere else in the yard. So this is the two weeks after shooting the original video we have a nice bit of new growth we have a little bit of growth coming here off of the stem and i've been keeping this in the shady uh, western side of the house over in our shade garden uh elevated up a little bit on the end of a upturned pot to keep the chickens out of it <laughs> um just long enough so it can get a start and i am going to start transplanting this into the garden and then using this same pot to get the roots going on the uh, the cuttings that I have in a jar in the kitchen. So it's kind of a, you know, the cuttings are stage one, this is stage two, and stage three is just in the ground. And again, to protect it from the chickens, I'm going to have some chicken wire just around it. You know, kind of dome over it a bit um, for a few weeks until it really flushes out. Also, 
you could just take a cutting, which you can see these little nodes here on the plant. That's where the roots grow out of. So I could break off these little leaves at these nodes farther up, dip it. You could use rooting hormone. I've had success even without having, like dipping it in rooting hormone um, and just place it in a cup of water on like a sunny windowsill and it will start to grow new roots out of those nodes and then you can just take that section and plant it. Usually it takes about six to eight weeks I've found before it has enough root development on it for me to confidently plant it outside and you will just like any other transplant want to make sure that it stays well watered but not flooded so that you know it can kind of get a grip in its new environment you'll kind of acclimate it to its new home but some of the key features that you'll notice with anything in the mint family if you like move into an area and your house you think you might have some mint it has a square stem I don't know if you can see. I'm going to have to break this one off. Sorry, guys. This one will be a good example. I'll make a cutting out of this guy. But you can see, it maybe, it has that square stem. It's kind of hairy. You know, it's got a little bit of fuzz going on to it. And it has these alternate leaves. So this set of leaves are growing this way. And this set is growing quite opposite. So it's very squared off in the way that it grows. Most of the time, now, it has experiences a light toothing along the edge of the leaves. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm allergic to nature, oh my gosh. Um, but, and it can vary so much plant to plant. But, and they'll, their flowers will be like these little stamens, or that's not the right word for it. Sorry, I'm not good at my vocabulary. But you're gonna have like a little like plug of flowers that are covered in a bunch of tiny little blossoms. And they're really great for pollinators. Now also, we can come over here maybe. And you can see over here I have a combination of, this is some of the sweet mint down here. I'll take a cutting of this one too. So here you can see this is the mint two weeks after shooting the video. This is the amount of root growth it has. So it is actually ready to go into some soil. And this is just in a mason jar with some sink water. Um, I think I dipped just the tip into some root hormone, but it is, I mean, some really, oops, some really nice root development. And so I would set this just into some garden soil, water it real nice to get rid of any air pockets around the roots, but you can see it has all these nice little filaments, little root segments coming, building off of each other. So that's the sweet mint, and then this one has a couple of dead leaves on it. They were submerged, but in place of where the leaves were, and this one's actually sending up new growth off the length of the stem and this was uh this one is a cutting of actually lemon catnip which ember loves <laughs> but you can see its root development hasn't started off quite as well but it's getting there and again you can see this one is far less hairy in texture but it still has that nice square stem and it still has the alternate leafing patterns. If you pinch off your mint at the top, like if I had pinched this off right there, it will promote more side growth. So that's why I actually do like to go through with my mower on high, because most of the front guard now is actually taken over by mint. Um, I go through and I do my mower on high and I get nice bushy mint, which I wish y'all could smell this. It smells amazing. Mm. Um, but so you can see those, oops, those two varieties side by side, but I'll mow it on high and it'll flush out and make a really nice bushy yard as opposed to this section over here that I just showed you where you can see it'll grow quite tall if you let it. But in the mannerisms of each plant will be different, but also over here, and you can see I have one a little farther back. 
and I'm actually going to experiment with this one and see if I can't get a cutting of it. But this is bee balm, and it's very similar. Uh, same family, I think. Might not be the same like family family, but they're definitely close cousins to mint. They won't cross pollinate between each other, whereas these two varieties would. Um, but yeah, it, it has very similar tendencies. It still has a hairy stem, very square, alternate leaves, same kind of toothing pattern around the edges, and just anything that grows in the mint family is going to have that same kind of tenacious, almost a veracity in the way that it grows. Hey, chickens! <laughs> There's the girls. Um, whoops, there goes my hat too. But I really like it because these chickens, like even I've had to protect the mint from the chickens. They are so hard on that. All these little covers and things that you see in my garden are to keep my plants safe from the Spice Girls. Um, <laughs> but they, they are such good birds, though. But um, the mint will hold up to all of that. And so whenever you're getting into gardening um, and you want something that's going to be able to live through you watering it too much or you not watering it enough or... Uh, just mints a real trooper and just the fact that it comes back year after year and again on the note of it does get out of line but it is so much easier to rip this stuff up than it this stuff up this mint up than it is to battle with Bermuda or crabgrass or some of these other <sighs> weeds basically that are taking over my yard that I feel like don't really serve a good purpose. I like. I don't mind dandelions. I don't mind dead nettles, which are actually a relative of mint. Hey, girl, what you doing? I got that belly. Yes, I do. Sorry, <laughs> distracted by a chicken. Um, it, you know, anything that flowers, I will let grow in my yard because it's helping the pollinators and stuff. So, I'd rather pull up mint than. Um, crabgrass and stuff. So I hope that this video was helpful to you. If y'all have any questions, comments, or ideas, I would love to hear from you. If you have any requests for other plants to do a little bit of, um, like a, I don't know, I hope that this was a helpful video, um, but to kind of talk about, um, please let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them as well as participate in my weekly giveaways and all of the different things that we do here at Back to Earth Creations, please check me out over on Patreon. We do all sorts of behind the scenes content and uh, I don't, just all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. Um, we have a lot of fun over there and I think you might too. And then also just liking, sharing, and subscribing can do so much to help keep our channel going. So thank you guys again and until next time, happy crafting. Happy gardening, and we'll see you around. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>